This fur opted originally at Penderbrook, then at West End, then ended up at Largo apparently. Anyway, ended up in Honduras, and then it ended up being dropped. Um, this bracket, which attaches to the top of the left bank, severed. Um, but it's hard to know what else is going on because something is rolling around inside the uh, right bank as well. And this is out of alignment. So it's in bad need of cleaning and who knows what else. Frozen, uh, frozen JCC mechanisms that has to be clean as well. It's turning the axis as we're turning this. So anyway, um, let's see if I can get this apart. But this this one is also damaged. It would seem uh, much more play than I expect, but might not be a, an issue. PD thing misaligned as well. So I've never taken apart this top bracket of the Fropter more than this any time before. However, it looks like if I remove these two screws from both ends, then this front bracket just might come loose. But hard to be sure um, how things are held together here. So when I take off these two screws, then this slides off. So this might be a step in um, removing this top bar. Hard to know. So after I got the washers off both sides, this uh, mechanism can now lift off. This is um, 11 centimeters from this point to this point. Next, when I loosen these two screws, it allows an increase or decrease of play in this, the way it wobbles like this. And so I think I can uh, tighten it up by compressing this and retightening the screws. So readjusting the position of these two screws has allowed this to now have virtually no wobble. Same story on this side, this had a huge amount of wobble and by moving these inwards I was able to snug it up. Also by removing these it appears I can take off this section which might be necessary to uh, remove the bracket. The bracket which was broken here, I removed it, removed the screws in the bracket. Then I was able to lift this piece off after removing the um, the PD lever. It lifted off and I removed also the PD indicator which is bent. And there's this little white rectangular thing which covered the back of the bubble I think to make it more visible which might have to be glued or taped in place or something to keep it from shifting. This crack in the bottom of the frame does not appear to be structural, so um, I'll probably leave that as is. And the corresponding bracket on the other side um, also appears cracked, so I should probably repair those, uh, re replace those two brackets. For, for the next trick, as I'm trying to figure out how to get apart. Uh, this brass unit from this non-brass unit so I can get out those screws. Uh, there's an Allen screw there, there's a couple of Phillips screws there. But doesn't really look like that's going to get it apart. Another Allen screw there might
might do part of it. But again, nothing's too intuitive here. So I loosen this set screw and it allows this now to slide that direction. I loosen this set screw and it allows this to slide up. And that's giving me hope that I might be able to get this apart. Next I remove this plate which didn't really do anything. I've got a, another Phillips screw around here. And I'll just put it back in place, but what I was able to do was to slide this shaft out more, which has now given me more gaps to take these two pieces apart. So this shaft actually goes down into there, which was the final ingredient to getting these two pieces apart. So in loosening the uh, appropriate set screws, to loosen this one again so I can slide this out but it goes back so this slotted thing goes over this and um, the shaft will then go through this hole to be flush with the top of this piece and then the set screw tighten back down on top of it um, So this is the top bracket of the back of the phoropter. And so I think I have pretty well documented what needs to be done to um, get this back together again if I can just order the replacement part, whatever that costs. And then probably those two brackets at the top here which are cracked which may or may not need to be replaced and then uh, straighten the PD rule find out what's loose inside of here <laughs> unfreeze all the components clean all the optics <laughs> um, yeah fairly big project as I'm going deeper into the thropter I realize that this break in the bracket wasn't just a chip it was a uh, this bracket where it's severed from so this is uh, connected to the forehead rest mechanism I remove the knob next to unscrew this piece next to unscrew this piece and I'll have to redocument how I put this back together again then using the plastic end of this uh, screwdriver, I was actually able to tap out, tap, 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 and pop out this piece. And so then this piece fits into the, um, the top bracket here of the phoropter. So this front bracket has to be replaced. Um, as well as um, this um, whole back of the phoropter. So the crystalline sounds I heard, or the shifting around sounds I heard from the um, uh, right bank was because uh, when it fell it uh, severely indented this PD sighting mechanism and um, and then broke the the glass piece right underneath here. Chipped the edge of the steel, or not steel, white, white metal, and then broke the glass underneath it. So this side, the PD setting mechanism won't work. However, so infrequently used, uh, it's probably not even an issue. So this is a rebuilding of a broken phoropter. Um, my suspicion is the phoropter was dropped, which caused uh, this bracket to break off the top of the phoropter. This is the new replacement part. 
additionally, um, this top support bracket of the Fropter had this piece severed off from it. And this is the new replacement part. And I'll be transferring the parts from the broken one to the new one. Same story, uh, I've removed all the parts from the back of this um, Fropter body and I'll um, be putting those parts onto this and then reconnecting it. The severed uh, top bracket I've sort of left in place here so I can figure out how to get it back together again. Two Allen screws secure this bracket to this component uh, part of the back of the fropter. When I put in these two um, Allen head screws, I used a little um, thread locker to um, make sure the screws don't accidentally loosen up. Next step, this set screw from the broken piece gets transferred over to this hole. This intricate puzzle continues. Okay, this shaft has to come out temporarily. Too tough to do with one hand. Then the shaft will go back in here. Now while these parts go together, I'm also um, painting them with my um, Silglide 3-in-1 oil mixture, which I use uh, for many parts. Once this shaft slides in to be flush with the top, this set screw will tighten onto this portion of the shaft, but it has to go all the way in. Next, this shaft goes in through this mechanism, and you can see how the uh, notch in this piece goes with this pin. So to get this shaft to slide in, I had to back up and um, pull out this pin, loosen the two Allen screws that hold this bracket in place, and then slide in this pin, <laughs> tighten this Allen screw, shift a little, tighten the other Allen screw, and then slide the pin back in in order to, um, to get this mechanism in. So I had to back up to get the alignment proper. And also I had to lift this back up in order to fit in the uh, PD tilt lever. So, hard to know all the steps in advance, even though I took it apart. So this is the broken main support, main support assembly, and I transferred this rod from here to here. There's an Allen screw there. It's threaded through the rod and so I replace that. Next there's two little set screws here which get transferred over here. Another little set screw here and here which get transferred correspondingly here. So each of these four set screws that I transferred, I um, have a Torx T5 tip, and I put um, thread sealant on the threads as well as in the holes of the threads. Um, um, they were tough to get out, and so what I'm going to assume is that the thread sealant will harden. It says that the replacement part is supposed to come with um, this level bubble 
but um, indeed it didn't and I was told that by the parts person so I ordered the bubble level as well as this um, backing for it which I'm assuming assuming I'm going to secure by uh, some glue probably epoxy glue to hold it in place well this bubble level is a very loose fit as I look at the um, original broken one it's hard to know what this white material is it's uh, a hardened um, white powder um, securing it in place and um, I don't know what it is there's a little um, metallic uh, spot on this side of the level and this uh, one has it as well um, it's probably designed to help you with orientation when you put it in so anyway this is a, an unknown I'm gonna have to consult uh, with, with uh, possibly someone at Lombard to see how this goes back together again so I consulted last night by email with my um, repair person uh, at Lombard and um, he said um, basically just super glue it in place now at the and he also said make sure you get the it actually is curved and so make sure you get the curved part in the proper up direction <clears throat> what I noticed is that the original one has this um, piece of metal stuck to the outside of the tube and the replacement part has this piece of metal stuck to the outside of the tube so I just mimic the same um, position of both of those um, the other thing he suggested was to use white out to paint the back of the tube so that it um, gives a white background instead of using this uh, square because he's had this square slip on him. I think I'll probably do this both. I'll um, use white out and then glue this in place. Um, so anyway, he said super glue it. I, I uh, glue this in with five minute epoxy, which takes about 15 minutes to set fully um, but the other thing I was thinking is, is you know that there's this weird sort of it looks like plaster it doesn't feel quite like it but I thought well that'll fill the air gap around it and um, keep any debris from falling in it so I thought that probably the closest equivalent is uh, caulk so this is fast drying it's supposed to set in about 20 minutes so I'll I think I'll uh, trowel a little of this around the, the back of it to make it look like uh, this one so that secures it in place even more so than the um, epoxy which I put on the metal front surface and on the side so that it's glued front and side with epoxy and then I'll fill in the gaps with this and then um, white out the back of the bubble and then also put this glue this thing back there for double kill overkill so this took um, just a couple little dabs of uh, this latex caulk from this huge tube five and a half ounce tube as uh, small as I could get um, anyway that serves both as um, white out as well as filling in the gaps around the uh, around the bubble and makes for a good appearance from this side I'm also gonna after this dries I'm gonna glue on that little um, tab for the back of it to complete the process then start putting the rest of it together so I feel as if I'm about ready to start putting things together again um, this groove fits onto this shaft this groove fits into this bracket 
Same thing with the other side. I've been coating the inside surfaces and the contact surfaces with this uh, mixture of Silglide and 3-in-1 um, oil, basically painting it on with this uh, brush as the pieces are going together. So this uh, is a new bracket which the old one is broken in two pieces. Now this is where the uh, set screws at the top here come into play. By snugging these up it pushes the bracket against the um, the slider, the, the brass slider piece there and now it has just a little bit of wobble and now there's no wobble and it's probably a little over tightened so that it doesn't want to slide very easily so it's a matter of uh, getting the adjustment uh, right on those set screws and then tightening these two screws down on the uh, bracket so perhaps adding a little um, side lighting here when you get the set screw adjustments right so that it slides without much wobble then tighten these screws down on the bracket and that'll hold it in place So that's the full range of motion. So these four screws on these uh, two top brackets are now secure and the set screws I was able to use to get it to just the right tension, just a little bit of wobble enough so it can slide freely. Next I cleaned off this threaded rod, um, relubricated it with the Silglide 3-in-1 oil mixture and it's just sort of snapped in place now. Um, I try to put the same amount of threads on, on both sides and, and just lined it up. Next fitting on these um, end pieces, the long part in, the short part on the outside of the rim. Same story um, on this side, long part on the frame on the inside and the short part where the knob goes on the outside and then just snug up those screws. And then this is held in place by um, these two screws. So the flat spot on that shaft lines up with the set screw on the knob, both sides. Then I found I had to back up um, a couple steps and uh, take this assembly off again I had to um, uh, take off this these two screws this knob pull this away enough to rotate this one revolution outward because what I found was when this side hit the exterior frame on this side it was away by uh, a millimeter or so from the frame and so by one revolution of this knob, I actually got it even on both sides so that when it touches the outside here, it touches the outside here. Um, 
So eyeballing it wasn't quite enough to, um, to get good symmetry. So here we are starting at 48 millimeters. Not quite a smooth moving on the tabletop, but still the PD then expands to uh, 75 millimeters. So this is the forehead rest mechanism. This uh, side pin goes into the frame here. I've already lubricated um, washers and bearings and surfaces uh, already. So the pin from the central shaft goes into the uh, frame right there. On this side I've lubricated this surface, then there's a washer, a bearing, and next goes um, this piece which um, already has a washer on it. As this mechanism goes in, this replaced spring inside here has to be compressed so I can uh, fit this back in place so that this fits against that knob and this shaft fits against this knob. So there was a washer on the surface there, bearing goes on top of it and then this uh, fitting screws on top of the uh, bearing surface. Next I want to tighten this uh, fitting. Since the um, final knob is not in place, this can uh, be pushed out of place and a most unlikely um, tool is used uh, to snug this up and I can get additional leverage. This is a, a square and the blade just happens to uh, be the right size to fit inside there so I can uh, torque it down to uh, tighten the mechanism up. And as I tighten the knob on this side with this uh, end of this T-square, it pulled the um, pin inside that space on this side. Next this um, fitting is tightened into the uh, knob there and this can be pushed out of the way similarly and the same T-square uh, fits into that slot to snug that up. Next the, um, the final knob goes on the surface of the shaft and which holds the shaft in place and the next forehead rest pot gets popped back on there. As usual the flat spot on the shaft lines up with the set screw on the knob. To get the uh, forehead rest in place um, this pin is um, sort of tapped through this hole while the forehead rest is in position. Now the forehead rest can go either um, large part up or large part down and I don't know that either one is correct but what I tend to look at is um, more of the metal frame lines up with the plastic frame if the larger part is down. And so that's the way I tend to do these when I replace them, but they can go either way. And the forehead rest pin is in place properly when there's um, the same amount of metal uh, recessed on one side as there is on the other. Uh, when the pin is put through equally on both sides, and that's pretty well the end point. So this is the uh, completed reassembled um, Fropter, not completely repaired, uh, definitely not completely clean, but um, back to um, um, the functioning of the parts. The Fropter able to hang from the 
bracket, which it couldn't because it was broken off. And um, both banks hanging with, um, with only a little bit of wobble in the banks. And then when, when we turn the knob, the uh, PD scale can go through its full range of motion. So continuing on, continuing on with this broken Phoropter, I thought I was done with all the crises and I would just have to clean the optics and smooth out some of the gears that weren't working real well. But what I found was the um, patient left cylinder axis was pretty much frozen in place. So I thought, oh, okay, this is the cross cylinder mechanism inside here and um, I took it apart and took out the gear and I thought okay now it's going to be unfrozen and it wasn't so next I took off the um, cover for the turret assembly and started soaking oil in there and thought okay it's going to work now and it still was frozen I could barely turn it at all so the next thing well geez I haven't done this before so I took off the plate here because it seemed like it was resisting all through and uh, remove those three screws then um, I found there was these two screws that secured this mechanism in place remove those took this out then I found now all the gears turn, but what I also found is there's, there's a whole bunch of gears in here. And all these gears connect to all the different uh, cylinder lenses. A very complex network. So when you turn the axis knob, It rotates the cylinder lenses basically all um, eight cylinder lenses simultaneously not just the one you're working on so um, once I got um, this piece out I found out that it was no longer jammed um, this turns freely so I don't know if there was something in the gears, something in the way they're meshing, or something dried up in here, and I've been putting three-in-one oil in here, and I've been putting three-in-one oil in the gears in here, and then I'll add some of my Silglide three-in-one oil mixture to the gears when I'm all done, but um, this is a new adventure, every, every step of the way it seems. I suppose what could have happened is in the fall, presuming this fropter was dropped, that it hit this and caused it to push and jam into the gears so that they were pressed into each other instead of in a relaxed, easily moving position. So it could have just been it was forced into the gear with, with no um, uh, wiggle room and that's why it was so hard to turn and once I released the screws now it, now it turned properly. I just had to get it realigned after I've got it all cleaned out and lubricated. Make sure the axis that is matches here and matches here when I'm all done. So as I now see there's a retaining spring which goes around it more than 180 degrees and it looks like I might be able to free this from the mechanism so I can more thoroughly clear out the, the gear, the debris in the gears. Yes, now separated, so now I can clear out the, all the gear pieces uh, to make sure there's nothing there that's obstructing it. There might have been debris in there as well, but uh, and it was jammed. So I got this um, lens mechanism back together again. Now I, as I look here, I actually see the evidence that it was uh, struck here there's a dent right there which would go along with 
this whole mechanism shifted and jammed into the, into the gears inside, which is why it became very difficult to, to move, virtually frozen up. Must have been a big fall. Lots of damage. And most of it now resolved.